What's up YouTube? Jeremiah Hersey here from Pragmatic Works and today I'm going to be talking about the select columns function. This is the third video in a six part series I'm doing on virtual tables. And so in the last video we talked about the add columns function. Well the select columns function is very similar to add columns except for one thing. The select columns function starts with a empty table before adding the columns to it. And if a simple column name is referenced, then it will preserve that data lineage, which we'll talk about more in the next episode. So let's go ahead and jump right into our file. If you want to download it and follow along, just click the link below to get that file. So here we are inside of our desktop and we're going to go over to the data view here. And we're just going to select the new table option here at the top. So the select columns function is a iterator function, which means it goes row by row within a table and has row context. So I'm going to call this function here. I'll call it my select columns function. All right. So that's the name of our table here. And so let's bring back some information about the product table. So I'm going to type in select columns here. Once again, this starts with an empty table. So the table that I want to call out to is my product table. So now we can determine what information we want to put inside of it. Notice the name up here is in square brackets. That means it is a optional parameter. We do not have to include it, but for this example, we are going to. So I'm going to hit shift enter here. The first name of the column that I want is the product name. That's going to be the name of my column. Now I have to determine the expression that defines it. Well, that's going to come from the product table and that's going to be the English product name. The next column that I want in this table, um, maybe the product color. Okay, so I'll put in the product color here. And once again, the expression for that is just going to be the product table and the color column. Now we can also pull back values um, with inside of our table, but we have to remember that we are inside of row context. So for instance, if we are going to pull back something like the number of sales, which is just a count rows function of the sales table, it's not going to return the proper value unless we force context transition to occur or we use a navigation function. So for this column, the number of sales here, this is simply going to be a count rows function of the sales table. Now, once again, if I were to do this, if I were to run this select column statement, this would return the same value over and over again because we're in row context with inside of the product table. It cannot filter any other tables. So here we can force context transition to occur by adding the calculate function. You can also use a navigation function here as well and use the related table function. And the last column that we're going to do here, let's just use a measure. Let's call this sales and we're going to use our total sales measure. Now, once again, a measure is implicitly wrapped in a calculate function, which is why this is going to work. So we'll go ahead and return that table. Now at first you're probably thinking, well, it's not returning results. We just need to filter out the blank values here. And we can see that we're now getting the total number of sales, the color and the sales amount as well. So as we look at the select column function, once again, remember that it is a iterator function, which means it goes row by row performing an expression and it has row context. So if we want to write expressions that navigate through relationships, we're going to have to either use the navigation function or a calculate statement to force context transition to occur. So one thing that we can do here is we can add additional information with inside of this table. 
So let's put a filter on this table here. So I'm going to put a filter on this table by using the calculate table function. So the table that I'm going to be using here is the select columns table. The filter that I'm going to apply here is maybe where the customer table and the marital status is equal to single, which is just an S. Okay, so this is a way that we could provide additional filters here using that calculate table function. So notice our values are changing here. So this is now allowing us to provide additional functions here. Now, what if we wanted to use the sales table? All right, so our fact table here, let's switch this up. So instead of using the product table here, I'm gonna use the sales table. All right, so I'm gonna call out to my sales table here. Once again, the select columns function starts with a empty table first and then adds the columns we choose to it. So I can say, all right, maybe I want the order number. And that's gonna be from the sales table. And that's gonna be the sales order number. Okay, so just like I did with the product table here, I'm naming the column first and then de determining how it is defined. So what if I wanted the customer? Remember, we're on our sales table. So what customer purchased this, uh, this particular sale? Well, we're gonna have to use a navigation function. Because we're on the fact table, we're gonna use the related function here to bring back the customer name. So the customer table and that first name. So if we're gonna traverse those relationships that are defined, we have to use a navigation function because once again, the select columns function puts us in row context. So I can also maybe pull back the product that they purchased as well. So I'll call this the product and I can use the related function here to pull back the product name. I can also include expressions with inside of this as well. So maybe I have a column called the line amount. And this is going to be defined by the order quantity times the unit price. So I could say, all right, this is gonna be the sales table and the order quantity times Call it to the sales table again. This time I'm gonna call it to the unit price. All right, we'll go ahead and define that. Once again, with that calculate table that allows us to put additional filters in. So once again, I could say, all right, I wanna filter this where the customer marital status is equal to single. So you can provide additional filters in there using that calculate table function. So we'll go ahead and return this. So what we're gonna see is that it works across all four columns here, okay? The line amount, order number, customer, and product. Now, one thing to note about the select columns function is that the column names can be omitted where it's just a simple column reference. So if we're just gonna reference the name of a column, we can actually omit the number or the name. We can actually omit the name. So if I were to remove the name here, so I'm gonna remove the name. Remember it was an option, okay? And I'm also going to remove the name on the product as well, okay? Now this is going to give us some false errors here. So notice all the errors that are occurring here. It actually is gonna work just fine. But one thing to note is if you modify this, it actually changes the order of the column. So when I run this here, we're gonna see that all four columns work correctly. Notice sales order number is references sales order number. English product name is references English product name. So if you're just doing a simple column reference, you can just reference the name of the column. Now, additionally, 
as we're talking about this function, we also talked about data lineage as well. So if we just use a column reference, like we do right here, calling out to the sales table, the sales order line, the sales order number, this is going to maintain data lineage, which means it knows where this column came from. It means that this can filter. If we were to call out to anything other than this, it is going to break the data lineage. So for instance, if I were to concatenate some kind of value onto the end of this and run it, Okay, so notice that it's giving us an error. Okay, so it's not able to pull back the correct values because it is more than just a single column reference. So if you use a single column reference, it maintains that data lineage, allowing it to filter properly. If you add anything additional to it, it will break that data lineage, which we'll talk more about in the next episode. I want to thank you so much for joining me and if you like this video make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content and look out for the next video which is going to be talking all about data lineage. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next one.